Hi, welcome to Shelf Starters. I'm Rosie. I'm Kate. Hi, everyone. And today we are up to the Book of the Courtier, also known as the Courtier, depending on the translation, by Castiglione and translated by Sir Thomas Hovey. Yes, here we go. So I guess we have to know the two prongs, like who, Castag how do you say it, Rosie? Castiglione. I was, no, I'm just saying, I'm saying it's Castiglione yeah. <laughs> in my head. <laughs> what do we know about him? Do we start with him? Yeah, so he um, he was a diplomat and a courtier himself. And he was in, is it Urbino, Duke of Urbino's court. And he was a like humanist. That, which is, a lot of this is based on that. So it's kind of like a memoir, but he's sort of made it a fictionalised memoir. I found it really interesting, um, a little bit of the, well, of the translated version. Really, it, it reminded me for a fleeting moment of Dunn and the Flea when he was talking about... Oh. The kissing yep. and, and sucking the soul out of the other person. Ah. And that was Dunn's argument in the flea about, um, you know, the flea's bitten you and it's bitten me. So we've essentially already had a union. Ah. So because okay. he he's trying to convince her, basically. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that was, it was, anyway, we'll get to that. But so I just found the humanist kind of, that really interesting kind of. Very, a lot of the, like, the things that are talked about in here, I think. Well, I will preface it by saying that I don't think that this holds up to a modern reader, but it is a great um, <laughs> Very historical... hard for a contemporary <laughs> to get their head around the, the love it's, letter. It's a good, <laughs> good view of what people actually thought in the time. Like it is a really good um, depiction of Renaissance values. Yes. And it is basically talking about the origins of the Renaissance man. Yes, and how beautiful young men are. You know, mm. Beautiful young men. And what you need to be be a good courtier yes. is essentially the whole point of this and yeah beauty and is part of it beauty is part of it but whereas it's very interesting the view on beauty in women which is it's it's basically yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's an evil attribute <laughs> yeah yeah a woman can only hold beauty if she's got it and it could be only bring terrible things basically but a young man different deal altogether so a kind of interesting premise it is, it's really hard to like be on board with these discussions in a modern time. Basically. Very, very hard. But it's a it's a series of dialogues over like I think four nights in a row yeah. of courtier having this discussion of what makes a good courtier. So it's yeah. like it's one of those like philosophical, but in the kind yeah, of and even, yeah philosophical discussion that goes on. Yeah, and, and the essential um, virtue that they're talking about is recklessness which is exactly the opposite yeah which, and i think italian much better than that that the so it's translated as recklessness but the italian is spread such a word and what and, it, and it, it is i think the, a better translation in like today's because mod um hope it was the very first english translation would be more like nonchalance yes like it's, it's like because an idea of not showing you it's not don't be a try hard isn't it yeah so you yeah. want to achieve all of these things but don't look like you're trying to do that at, but you have to show that you're not trying so yeah. you have to be like um careless like without actually putting any eff effort effortlessly yeah. effort at everything but i it did that that <laughs> part i think may be slightly more something that you can resonate with in contemporary times that will you know no i think the opposite i think that it's um i think young people like that idea of not looking like you care yeah i guess that's true but it also i think that what it, the reason that it's so jarring is that we can see how artificial it is like well, we can. It looks, but it's, it's just like, like being cool rosie it's like the presentation of being cool I guess so but maybe I, because we're trying not to think about it too much we're also like not wanting to know that we're not thinking about it i don't know it's like yeah it's it's very clear that they're being kind of fake i suppose is a thing yes so um then we get to hobie himself and how he came to be the translator yeah he was um Spanish at some point he was a protestant he was in exile. exile because he was a protestant wasn't he yeah we talked about um you know in the in our faith and conflict discussion about how yeah. constantly between catholicism and protestantism yeah um depending on the ruler of the time and it was a very like turbulent kind of time for yes. religion and, yeah so in this time he was exiled because he was a protestant yes and so they think that he had written this translation long before he actually published it because the book was really famous in all of Europe and was like translated into all different European languages. And it was first, first came out in 1528 in yep. Italian. Yeah. And but the actual well, English part. translation 
was way delayed. It didn't come out until 21. Yeah, yeah. Very, and what yeah. we have in the Nortons that we're looking at is uh, just the two. We just have two, don't we? The, yeah, the first sections, book so. on grace, and then the second book on the, the ladder, the love ladder. Yeah. La ladder of love. <laughs> ladder of love, yeah. Which yeah. is the bit that we really didn't love because it's, it's <laughs> very, very sexist. The only, yeah, I like, I, the only bit I liked was when he described kissing someone as sucking out your soul. I thought that was kind of... Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> it's, it does have bits of humor, but yeah. they all didn't, like, they didn't necessarily yeah. all land with me. But basically, he's trying to, um, Castiglione, like when he's writing it, he's, um, he, like when things are starting to get too dry, he throws in some humor. So, kind of like, like Shakespeare does, I suppose. Yeah. He wants to, like, yeah, retain the flow and keep people interested, not let it get too dull yeah. at any point. But then some of the, the humor is clearly like humor of the times. So that's, it's a little bit, yeah. Like, there's a lot of making fun of old men as, like, that, like, um, like creepy lecture yeah. kind of thing. There's like that kind of, kind of thing. <laughs> like, yeah, not sure that's so funny. <laughs> yeah. oh, I don't know. No, I don't know <laughs> that, that goes that well anymore, no. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. of its time, for certain. Yes. For certain. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. So what of the, the writing that we've got here? Very simple, very it's to the point. Straightforward, isn't it? Yeah. yeah um and it's like it's an argument so I think that's um something that I have like I've only really come across since we've done this Norton challenge is that like having these diet the dialogue form mm. of like a philosophical argument so I'm kind of getting used to it now from the Nortons but it is it's weird because you sort of think as a dialogue with characters like actual yes. characters yes. talking to each other that you yes. might feel like it's more of a story and you just separate that with a, a little um the three star thing you know and then you go to yeah. the character and it's like okay yes, did you like uh, the style did I like what the style yeah I, I found it certainly not difficult at not all much right yeah no it was very very easy um very easy I mean I and I you know I was interested in what is considered beauty you know what what's beautiful um, and the argument about, um yeah but I, but I mean, then, you know, as soon as you start getting into it and then you get to the bit about women, of course, you prick up your ears. You know, the mm. beauty of women <laughs> is many times cause of infinite evils in the world, <laughs> hatred, war, mortality and destruction. Whereof, yes, because they made the of Troy as well. The, Troy, the raising of Troy can be good witness. Beautiful women, for the most part, have uh, be either proud and cruel or unchaste, pretty much. <laughs> Yeah, nice. So, yeah, they're either really just full of themselves or they're basically, you know, wanton hussies is what. Yeah, like even the whole point of the discussion, like the only like reason women are being brought up is just whether beauty is like a good or a bad thing for them. And it doesn't yeah. talk about any other part of a woman, you know, nothing like it's else. just about. Like, nothing else. There's yeah. absolutely no thought that there's any thinking or brain at yeah. all. Yeah, so that bit, so it was, I was going along merrily to like up to that part. Then I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think um, if you had had the so I, like I've got the full version here, which yeah. I like the cover. Got actually, very much. Yeah, like, yeah it's a great cover. It's lovely. Actually. Yeah, yeah. The cover is um, detailed from the story of the life of San Bernardino, showing young men and a priest talking in a palace courtyard. Yeah, so, that's, yeah. You can that's a, that would be a good cover. Yeah, that's quite suitable. Um, but I think like I, when you with the characters for a long time you get a sense of like of their sort of characteristics and their like viewpoints because they're they're all contributing to this discussion so you kind of build yeah. up on like so what you, they yes. in individually so I think the characters sort of stand out a little bit more when you have more time with them as yes. like individuals uh, well, yeah. Yeah. they wouldn't pretty, have really yes. I didn't really know I mean I did like um Lord Caesar I think he, Lord Caesar because he basically yeah. said well you know you can't let's not be too harsh it's actually poor, beautiful women. It's not all their fault. They've just got more offers. I mean, it was actually quite hilarious. So <laughs> it's not their fault they're not necessarily chased because they've got more offers all the time. Whereas if, yeah. if you're ugly, then you don't get any offers. So it's easy to be good and chased. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that was his argument. That, that actually did make me laugh. But that was like a smaller side. And I think that was probably yeah. designed to make us laugh. I don't, well, I don't know, but it certainly had that effect anyway. Yeah. But Peter Bembo is the main guy, isn't he? Yeah, he's the one that was annoying. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> didn't love that. And then we don't really get much of the women, but there is. Well, he, the Vince Bambo that... was the one who said a kiss is a knitting together of both body and soul. Yeah. <laughs> that you, yeah. He said you, you pour themselves by turn into one another's body. He was quite sensual. Yeah. And so mingled together that each have two souls yeah. and one alone. So um, this ending would know. Your and that's the bit that reminded me of John Donne, The Flea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which and we're like going to get the ones in the Norton, I think. Yeah, we are. And I, so I like that little bit. So, yeah, that was. But yeah, like he, he's, he, Bembo is the one that's really passionate and gets a little bit like carried away with himself. So it says that it gets yeah. to a point where he's like standing there, holding his eyes toward heaven <laughs> as a stonied. Um, and then basically the, lady lady amelia has to be like come back to us <laughs> stop, you know, stop like getting too into it yeah yeah it says, and then like, the whole he, kind of metaphor of the um the stair thing the, the ladder and the stairs mm -hmm. so and how hard it is to get up the stairs <laughs> <laughs> which is your soul isn't it that's what they're yeah. talking about. So, um, and, uh, what an effort it is <laughs> To be good all the time and do the right thing with all these different values that they have to do well in as well it's a lot yeah so and it was based on so their idea of um the perfect courtier so some of that idea about love and about recklessness did that come from plato yeah so basically um i read something that was like so i haven't read the actual original like no. philosophical stuff. I think maybe that's a bit of a gap in like for me being able to understand what's being referenced where but mm. apparently like the majority of these arguments are basically copied and pasted from um it was Plato, Plutarch, um someone else. Socrates, you know? Socrates perhaps? Well because wasn't that the Socrates-Plato relationship? Yeah uh no Cicero and Livy. Okay. So like <laughs> It kind of makes sense, this whole talking about the beauty of young men. And then, you know, when you think of Plato, I mean, that's the whole idea of platonic love and all of that. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a lot of discussions about, yeah, about love and that. Yeah. yeah. So it and the other, thing, the other thing I think is like actually, um, like the way to view this that is, I think, more interesting is in terms of the shift in the historical period. So because we've yeah. done the medieval now. Yes. So we've gone from the, the value of the medieval knight to now we need to like transform it into what this means in the Renaissance time. And so it's kind of like this Renaissance court here is the replacement for that medieval knight that was much more into the um, battles and um, like physical strength because they weren't. And now we're moving to, to <laughs> chival well, then we're going to move into chivalry. Yeah. Well, the chivalry came with a sort of a transition from medieval knight chivalry to this courtier oh, we're, where going to the go back, we're going to get more the chivalry aren't we because we're going to yeah more more of the like um manners part of chivalry well, the hum the humanist right. kind of yeah yeah the humanist view i think that side of it heading for and this book is referenced in the schoolmaster so it's a good tie between roger Askham and yeah 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 and yeah yep yeah. nice nice so it was really it was a big text at the time that everyone was talking about so i think it is good for us to see that but yeah, maybe not the most exciting to read. Well, it was I, it was the treatise, wasn't it? It was a bit of a treatise. I yeah, think. it's like what everyone was aspiring to. And oh, I so said the reason that um that Askin was bringing it up was because he thought that this was a better education to just read this instead of going to Italy for three years. He said this is better oh, for right. you than yes. much better because in Italy, you know, bad things are going to happen. So yeah, yeah, stay home and read. Instead. But this tells you all you need to know anyway. Yeah, you don't have to go and experience any of the horror of Italy itself. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I think interesting from that sort of contextual part, mm. for sure. But otherwise, I don't know, it's not, it's not like exactly this is, you know, lie down on a Sunday afternoon and have a nice read. No. It's not. That. <laughs> no, 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 no. That it's not. But no, it was interesting. It was definitely interesting to, to read these little snippets, for sure. Snippets, yeah. 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 And that is what we got. And yes. then, you know, it's a nice little segue into women. Yeah, we've had enough now. Yes, but now we're getting to the much more exciting part for me anyway, um, which is women in power. And I think we're going to do this in um, 
this is like actual historical texts, so letters, speeches, yeah, which are exactly by cool. strong women at the time. I can't wait to do this because we got to have Queen Mary, we got to have Jane Grey, yeah, so and Elizabeth, is, and there's a bit from um, the schoolmaster in this too. So I think next week we'll go up to Elizabeth first, okay, because it's quite a long session, and then the week after we'll do all on Elizabeth. Okay, that sounds good. Which is good lead up to the Fairy Queen, of course. The Norton yeah. does lay things out really well. It does make sense. Yeah. <laughs> the order does work well. That sounds good. Really good. Yes. I'm looking forward to this a lot. I'm especially looking forward to the um, speech with the troops. Yeah. Elizabeth does. Right. Well, you know what I think they could do with, with this is um, turn it into like a satire, like move, uh, period satire thing now in a movie. Yeah. I think that'd be quite yeah um like like they kind of like um oh, what was that one with um our favorite actress that came out recently and um oh god that's terrible <laughs> i can't remember the name of it now um but the really funny movie that where she won the oscar for it oh <laughs> yes i know exactly and i can't yeah yeah yeah, oh, yeah. Why are we so hopeless? I'll put it on the screen. <laughs> well, look it up later and put it on the screen. Yeah. But anyway, like kind of like how Olivia, that was Olivia. Really Olivia. Olivia, yeah. Coleman. Olivia Coleman. Coleman her yeah. movie, whatever that was. Anyway, um, that was really funny because it was making fun of that like courtier kind of thing with it's the ridiculous. guy yeah. from uh, all the yeah. mannerisms and yeah. yeah. Yeah, all the mannerisms. So I feel like this could easily like be turned into something like that. It, it could be quite funny. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Um, let us know if you are planning to read it. <laughs> that was this <laughs> total rant, wasn't it? Really, but anyway. total rant. Anyway, um, it was an interesting piece, but like I think I think it gives you good context on the historical period. But um, yeah, it's certainly not applicable today. So <laughs> <laughs> read with caution. <laughs> read with caution. Don't take this as your own guidebook. It won't no, go down well. No, you won't. You won't, <laughs> you won't be treated well if you walk around being like this. People won't appreciate it. No. No. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, let us know if you have read this or are planning to. And, um, yeah, we will see you again next time with Women in Power, which is very exciting. Yes. And that's everything. Thanks for watching and see you again next time. See you next time. Bye.